that was called to order. Okay. So, another meeting of the Montpelier Planning Commission. Uh, first thing on our agenda is, agenda is the call to order. The second thing is the approval of the agenda. Does anyone have anything for the agenda? Okay. All right. Looks good. So, do we need to vote on that? I've done this a million times and I haven't even paid attention. All right. So, moving on from approval of the agenda then. Approved by consensus. Approved by consensus. Uh, comments from Kirby, the vice chair. Uh, just, we have a full agenda tonight because we plan to get through a section by section um, review of the uh, design review overlay district regulations, including and mostly involving historic preservation. Get those suggestions along the way back to the historic preservation uh, committee. So that's going to be almost all of tonight. Uh, and then we up, but before that, we do have to get through the election of new officers because we didn't have a quorum last meeting and, and we didn't get that done. So with that, I'm good. And we can move to general business comments from the public. And there's no one from the public here, so we can move on. And then to the election of the new officers. So what are people's thoughts about that? Um, Not hit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, 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 I'm fine with um, uh, holding down the fort until January as, as the chair. Uh, it would be helpful to have a vice chair um, if anyone's interested, though. Stephanie's not here. So we uh, should no. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't know what happens if we do is kind of what I was yeah. getting at. Um, it's dangerous. What are the thoughts? No, no. So, um, so yeah, the expectation would be, you know, you would get uh, to take a look at the agenda each week when Mike sends it around, uh, and then I would let you know if I can't make it to a meeting and you could fill in doing this stuff. So it's not. Um, so okay. I'll move to nominate Kirby as chair. Do we do both at once? Sure. We're we're. Uh, you're running together here. Yes, the uh, little loose party. Uh, and and <laughs> Aaron, Aaron is uh, vice chair. Okay, I'll second. Okay. So Take a vote. Is there, a, is there a discussion over that motion? Thank you for volunteering. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. Four zero. Congratulations. <laughs> All right. Great. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, with that out of the way, uh, there is the matter of the regional planning commission representation. Um, we have until the September meeting, the second Tuesday of September, to, to do anything about that. But I would like to pass it on to someone. I'll keep throwing it out until we have a volunteer. Stephanie was interested. When did she mention that last time? That she was interested? I guess it didn't register as a f commitment to me. That's why oh, okay. it's still in my head as something to, to try okay. to pawn off. But OK. okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll follow I up with her. Yeah, I, I think move that we table discussion of the planning right. commission representative. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just throwing that out there. Uh, okay, so let's get into the explanation of the regs. That's why Meredith's here so kindly to walk us through because she was the staff member who uh, helped the Historic Preservation uh, Committee with this. Uh, the way that we put it down on the agenda to get through this kind of most, hopefully the most efficiently is to just start with a general uh, explanation from Meredith and Mike about the process that goes into the decisions involving uh, these regulations so that we can go into the substance, substantive side of it kind of knowing how it's a little bit more about how it will be applied. And reading through these myself, I think that also means that we could probably start on page four of the regs because the first few pages are the um, the 
policy, uh, you know, description, which is not something that I imagine that we're going to weigh in on, and also the process sections themselves are those, like pages two and three. Um, so with that, I'll hand it off to Meredith to, to so, talk about. Yeah, so just for. Yep. Just because of the way it's described on the agenda, are yep. you looking for so? For this is live streamed, right? Yeah. So for the public. Meredith Crandall, uh, Planning and Zoning Administrator for the City of Montpelier. Um, are you looking more right now for the process that has occurred or the process going forward from here? Because this, the, the yeah, explanation I, I just, process I just used... See, yeah, the, what we were going for there, and I didn't, I didn't notice the way it was written there. Um, the second part of that where it says how the rules will be implemented, okay. that's the gist of what we're looking for. Okay. I think we 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 have a pretty good idea after the presentation before yeah. <laughs> about about good. what went into it. I was hoping it. so. <laughs> yeah, but uh, uh, sometimes when we've discussed this, though, we've been fuzzy on how was this going to go down in the real world. So I think starting there and then moving to the substance of it okay. is a good way. Yeah. I find examples really helpful if that's possible. To yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, you know, I think if if we're going to start bare bones somebody comes in with a project mm -hmm. if this is and interrupt me if i'm going off on a tangent that you aren't actually interested in so somebody comes into the planning department with a project they usually talk to either audra this assistant zoning administrator or myself they describe the project to us we look up the address it flags as design review district so we know design review rules apply in addition to anything else that applies um, then we get as much detail as them from them as possible on what that project entails we look up to check if the applicant doesn't know whether or not that um, any of the structures on the property are um, registered on the national or the state register of historic properties um, and, and that all flows into which regulations apply um, you know we try and do is deep of a dive and get as much detail as possible from the applicant that all goes into the um, section 2201 G submittal requirements these are things that we currently have to parse out explain to everybody what what they have to submit there isn't you know the current application has this little teeny tiny blurb of what somebody who's applying for design review needs to submit but it doesn't give this much detail so this will help applicants to be able to just pull that section out and give it to them or some people actually look at the rules before they come in so that's one reason we put that in there um, and then you know we'll do some level of review of those application materials when it comes to design review process and and a, we have a sense of what the design review committee is looking for um but right now a lot of times it's we can give a little guidance based on just experience and what we know the committee has looked for in the past but there's nothing for us to really point to you know it's not like we have this really nice lovely database of decisions it's oh wait i remember x decision you know, that's why it's great that we have Audra and, and Mike because they've been in the position a long time, but we don't have, like I said, a database that's really clear as to what every decision is. Um, Job security, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so anyway, so then um, if it's an application that just needs design review, um, it'll then go to the design review committee they review the application materials, have a hearing, discuss, you know, ask the applicant a bunch of questions. Um, usually it just takes one hearing to go over everything. Um, there's a lot of back and forth, a lot of questions about, oh, you know, can you do this or recommendations about, um, you know, the, the most recent hearing or meeting, there was a hearing on an applicant with a historic building that was replacing 29 windows on the historic section, the most historic section of the house. 
Um, and so one of the things that the design review committee really wanted to make sure was that the windows being put in were these Marvin integrity windows. They're new, modern windows. Um, you know, it allows the applicant to remove the exterior storm windows off the building, which is great because these are new modern windows that are insulated. Um, but they were really, they wanted to know exactly what kind of window was being put in um, to make sure that the look was going to be the same when it came to the number of panes, the style of the look. But, you know, there wasn't any, so, so they had to have that detail and question the applicant about it, but there wasn't any pushback on the upgrades to the windows as long as they looked the same. Um, but that was that was definitely a discussion point um, on just really the look of it. Is that, so they will only go to design review? That would not go to development? Right. So, th so I was going to, I'm sorry, I interjected a story to then yeah. keep going. So because this is just that particular application, because it just needed design review, there was nothing else that triggered review for that replacement of windows. Um, the design review committee looked at it. They approved it. I don't think they even gave any recommendations on that. Their recommendation form comes back to our office, to okay. the zoning administrator's office, because it's, it's an administrative permit with the recommendation from the design review committee as an advisory committee. And then it comes back, and then our does, office issues. Does that go to the applicant also? That form? Mm -hmm. um, the form, they sign the form at the hearing. Okay. Um, and then it comes back into our office, and then when the permit gets issued, they get a copy of it. Okay. Um, so that's just an administrative permit. That so that form has a sort of a checklist, it seems like, right? Right. So the, there's, there's two different recommendation forms. Um, one recommendation form is specifically for signs in the design review district because there are specific criteria that apply just to signs in the current regulations. And then the other form is for anything else in the design review district. And there, the criteria that are in the current regulations are what are listed there. Um, and so with these new regulations, we would have to come up with various new recommendation forms. This, there would be more than two sets of recommendation forms with these new regulations. Um, so that would be a, an administrative development that would need to occur before we could actually make these effective. Um, but I mean, our current our current recommendation forms are a little out of date and don't have the, the current regulation references on them. The language is all the same, but we never updated the section references because we knew there was going to be changes. Um, so that's, that is the process for administrative design review applications. Um, sometimes in those administrative permits, it'll go through design review and then come back. And there may be some other layers that um, either Audra or myself have to review. And we try to do that before the design review committee um, hearing happens. Sometimes because there's only a week in between the deadline and the hearing for design review committee. Um, it takes a little bit longer. But usually if it's administrative design review, it just takes a day or two after the hearing for that permit to be issued. Um, if it's a more complicated project, like demolition of a historic structure and a, you know, a rebuild within the design review overlay district, then you'll have your design review committee hearing, and then that advisory recommendation sheet actually goes to the development review board at the next hearing, either. Sometimes it's that same day, that same night, sometimes it's two weeks later. It kind of depends on when applications come in and how it all works out for timing purposes and um, public notice. Um, and then the DRB is the one who makes the ultimate decision, not the zoning administrator. But it's it's a similar process. It's just that the DRB may, may look at a much larger scope of of regulations at that point in addition to the design review and they usually in most cases both for administrative permits and development review permits we at least in my experience over the last year we just accept the design review committee recommendations um, you, Mike, I think you've had some experiences where the development review board has overridden or rejected 
a design review recommendation, like in your history yeah. here, I think. Yeah, it doesn't happen very often, but there were a couple of cases where people went to the development review board and had something overturned. There was a, an application, I know, on Main Street where um, somebody was putting in um, a new chimney out the back, so it's going to have for, I don't know if it was for wood fired something, but it was going to have a stainless steel chimney, and so they, DRC said they wanted it painted flat black so it wouldn't be shiny, but that would void the warranties of the product. So they went to the DRB, and the, the applicant went to the DRB and said, we agree to everything but not the painting because the painting would void our warranties, and therefore we want to um, move forward with the project ignoring that that recommendation and the DRB agreed and allowed it to go in without the flat black paint. Yeah. Well, and that actually, I just remembered another, recently we had a situation where um, the design review committee was reviewing a project that falls under the um, 24 VSA 4413 community facilities exception so that really narrows what the design review committee can or what, what zoning can apply as conditions on a permit so the design review committee oftentimes you know starts talking about a whole bunch of different issues um, but some of the things that they might put down as a recommendation we just can't enforce in zoning so it's on the recommendation form but we don't specifically list it as a condition on the permit um, but it that doesn't mean that the applicant can't do it because they've agreed, you know, they've said in the hearing that, oh, we might be able to do that. We just don't list it as a condition. Um, and then, of course, any of these, you know, if the if the applicant doesn't agree, they can appeal. Um, if it's a zoning administrative administrator decision, they can appeal to the Development Review Board. If it's a DRB decision um, or permit, then they can appeal it um, to the Environmental Court. Are there other process? Um, questions that I may have. Go ahead. This is not a process question. I'm just curious about how many projects go through the design review board a year, roughly. Oh, I don't know that number off the top. I mean, we have just anywhere from. I mean, there's two meetings a month. We can have average. Uh, I don't even know what the average is. I mean, we can have one application on the agenda, but that's pretty rare. Um, usually there's between like three and five applications, I would guess, on each DRC agenda. And we've maybe canceled three or four DRC meetings because say, of no. My guess was going to be between 30 and 45, depending think, on the year. Some years yeah, are It might be slow. more than, I mean, are you thinking signs as well, though? Yeah. Yeah, can, you, can you like characterize them maybe in terms of like how many... Most everything is a sign, honestly. Oh, okay. A huge percentage of the applications are signs because, you know, the design, th think about how many signs there are in downtown. Almost all of those signs are supposed to go through the design review committee. Um, so a, a lot of what I've dealt with is signs. Um, and then technically they're supposed to come in if they're doing a new paint color um you know you also have situations like you know the parking garage had like four drc three or four drc hearings continued hearings um there have been maybe three demolitions or so a lot of windows a lot of window replacements um and Pretty much everybody who comes in to do a window replacement at this point knows that if historically it's a two over two window, they need to ask to put a two over two window back in, even if they're updating it. Um, those are the biggies. I mean, there hasn't been lots of new construction in the design review district other than the parking garage because. Yeah, One Taylor Calid Street, the parking garage. Yeah, and I wasn't here for One Taylor Street. Um, yeah, because Caledonia Spirits is out, Timber Homes is out. Um, 
you know, there have been some some remodels yeah, and renovations. Cedar Street was out. out. It's on the other side. Of the, I believe it's the other side of the street. Oh. Yeah. What were the demolition? Um, sheds. A lot of times it's a, you know, a, a shed or a much more modern but run-down addition on the back of a historic building. That have, that's been a lot of what we had. Um, so there was the d demolition. The back of Elm Street. The back of Elm Street. There was a carriage, the oh, back of the... Yep, back uh, of Elm Street. There was um, School Street with the um, stairway. Um, there was the one we just did behind the behind the state house. Or there, was it behind the state house? I can't remember the street address. But that's that's usually what it has been so far. When you're talking demolition of of almost all of it has been demolition of historic structures, where or not the part being demolished is not contributing to historic structure, but it's attached to a historic structure, and so they get really careful about that. Uh, is, oh, there, is there a fee for design review? Application? There is. Um, it's a twenty. It's twenty five dollars, and then your decision recording fee. So if all you're doing is design review, it's forty five dollars right now. That's it. Um, so that's we don't. If it's just design review, um, we don't do a staff report, anything like that for the design review committee. We try and keep the administrative time on those fairly small. If they don't also go to the development review board or need some larger administrative approval. And then you need your zoning permit after that. Right, which or build, you, and build. can just be a paperwork function if it's just a design review matter. So the, I mean, that's the, yeah, you get your recommendation form and that gets folded into the zoning permit. And is there... So you can only you can get your zoning permit after you get your. Do you what? Do you have to wait until the appeals period for the DRB to expire before your zoning permit's issued, or can you have the? Um, we run them concurrently. We'll issue the permits. So the yeah. 15 days or whatever it is yeah. now can run concurrently. Yeah, yeah. Some some cities and towns wait until the decision period. You know. Right. Set section has ended and then they issue the permit. I think just with, it's, I think, you know, Mike and I have discussed this, that it's a function of, in part, just how many decisions and permits there are, that keeping track of that would be very difficult administratively. Um, and so, sense. yeah. Okay. Uh, so, to move along, um, how about we dive in? I'm going to actually just kind of go over real quickly the first few pages and what my thoughts are uh, just to get us rolling through. Uh, the purpose section is the first page and a third. And my thoughts there are that, uh, you know, the city council should decide whether they agree with the purpose section and that we don't really need to uh, put our two cents in on that. So unless someone has something, I think we could just skip that and leave it to the city council to decide if they agree with that. Um, I mean, I've, I've read it, and I think it's fine. Uh, so if there's nobody has anything on that, we'll keep going. The next uh, section are just there's, you know, there's this basic statutory uh, references and things like that and the boundary. And of course, the boundary is something we have to decide later ourselves. Uh, I'll comment real quick on yep. the so in B the enabling legislation. Mm -hmm. So the Historic Preservation Commission made a distinct uh, decision. We've always kind of we've always called it a design. The current rules control. are a design control district. Under the statutes, there are provisions for being a design review district and a local historic district and landmark. So one is usually referred to a design control, one's usually design review. They have expressly in the enabling said, we're doing design review. Versus the historic. Versus the historic design review. So just 
to be clear that they've they've intentionally selected the the broader um, set of enabling legislation. So there there are two choices we could go under. Before the old rules don't really say which one we're under. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not as clear. This so this this is a good addition to help specifically state which is the which of the rules we're following. We're either following the E rules or following the F rules under that section. But what you're saying is it's clarifying, it's not a substantive change. It's it's an important distinction and if somebody had a particular push that they thought we should be a historic we should only be regulating historic design review and people thought that's all we should be looking at, then we should probably be F. But this, what this they want would need is to change. us not to be just looking at historic, mm -hmm. but look at historic and new development, and therefore we should be mm -hmm. E. So that's and, that's, and that is how this is written. That's how this so is. unless we decide to totally break off yep. from that, then that's Yeah, I just wanted to point out, there, yep. there are other ways that they could have selected something, and they chose this one, which yep. I think is the right one to go with, but just and so you are aware. Just another just language choice. They specifically wanted to get away from the language of design review control. They don't want that control language in here anymore. They think that that just has negative connotations. Sure. I know that's a minor point, but I think mm -hmm. when it comes to presenting to the public, it's kind of an important point. Sure. Okay. Uh, so we yeah we have the overlay zoning references, the boundary. Like I mentioned, we're go we're going to be deciding that, uh, and then the applicability. Um, there's a list of exemptions here, exempt development. Um, I don't know if we need to get into what those are. Uh, well, I, but, but do you do we want to do we want to start getting I in just, there? <laughs> yes, yeah, oh, sorry. No, I just had a question about change in paint color because you mentioned paint color. So is that a, mm -hmm. is that something that's needed or? Well, I mean, that's the, right now, it falls within the group of things that get reviewed. Okay, the so historic, this would make a change then. Right, okay. historic preservation okay. thinks if all you're doing is changing the paint color, okay. they don't think you should be having to go to design review. They think that that's just outside of the purview. Pick, could, your, own, pick your own paint color. Could, could you mention some more of the, the exemptions in here that are new then? Yep, just give me a second to get my old <laughs> draft, because I didn't go through and, like, highlight, because if I did that the whole thing would be yellow. Um, so, right, I mean, right now there's only six exemptions okay. in the current regulations. Um, so, in a I couple mean, of these we might be able to remove anyways, they, but I wasn't going to get... Because they're exemptions. duplicative of yeah. the general exemptions? I think part of it was that they wanted to make sure that if people just looked at the design review regulations and didn't go at the beginning of the zoning regulations, they would still see what was exempt. That it was more of a um, public knowledge issue to make sure that they were listed here in the exemptions as well as in the very beginning of the zoning regulations. Um, so changes in paint color. I mean, the, the old exemptions um, had a very general... Uh, repair or replacement of architectural features using materials of identical composition, type, and appearance. They have elaborated and just clarified on that with your now exempt development item B, um, but making clear in here that it's not just that you that you can't keep identical you know, that you don't have to keep identical appearance that you can change paint color and other things. Um, so do do. do. Sorry. Um, so you can change so, siding, but you can't change the siding material? Right. So you can't go from wood to vinyl without going through design review. But you can go from one kind of wood siding to another kind, you know, different, an, another piece of wood siding that's a different color. Uh -huh. But, yeah, that's the consistent way this... Materials. Consistent materials. Consistent materials. Um, so one of the things that got added in here was repair the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing systems on the rear elevations. So that's a new exemption. They've just decided, look, if you're putting in an AC unit in the rear of your building, we don't care. We don't We don't need to see that, because that was stuff that was coming in, and it really made no sense to go to design review. Um, and rear of building is clear? Yep, it literally says on the rear building elevation. 
And then if you go, I believe, in the definitions, they have a much more detailed ele uh, definition section now. We tried to make sure that definitions that weren't already in the zoning regulations got added in at the end of this section. So yes, what does that fit in with exemption L, then, where they're talking about exempt or exterior placement of meters, et cetera, et cetera, propane tanks, HVAC equipment, that doesn't necessarily see, unless they, so that all of these are, must be located in your yard <coughs> or on your elevation. So L. give me one second. So, so, it's a, I think this is one of those things I, I tried to hash out the difference <laughs> with HBC, and honestly, I think they were uh, a little exhausted. <laughs> um, so how to figure out the differences between D and L is a little funky. Um, so you have your rear building elevation in D versus... Um, do, 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 do. Right. So D and L might be able to be combined because the first sentence of L is about on rear elevations, whereas the second sentence of L is about things in the rear yard or on the rear building elevation. So some of these things, you're not going to, you, you have an option of it being in the rear yard itself. Whereas not, there are other. You're not going to put the propane tank on the building. Right. You're going to put it behind the building. But then there are some things that are actually going to be on the building. So, uh, how to hash that out? Uh, you know, you can you can send it back to HPC to say, look, we need clarity on DNL, or you can try and finagle it yourselves. Um, it, 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 well, I think if we have the intent, we can work out what, yeah. how how to people how to do the phrasing and the wording. Yeah, and I think you know. D is clearly, it says, on the rear building elevation. They're both about things specifically in the rear or on the rear of the building. Um, I mean, there's I'm just there's a huge list. Um, Does anybody have any suggestions for changes here? For D and L? Yeah. I just guess L contemplates the rear yard or the rear building mm -hmm. as well, so it just seems to be more efficient, but we don't, doesn't be done. Yeah. Oh, and that's one of these other things that's new is G. Um, G exempts a lot of window and door repair and maintenance, including, um, you know, installation of storm windows and doors that don't alter the, the door, window or door openings, and where you have you know, the related, the, the storms don't conflict with the way the window is framed, you know, mm -hmm. dealt with on the inside. So that's a new exemption. At the risk of being a pain, mm -hmm. uh, you said that there's like six exemptions currently. Can you just okay. list what those six exemptions currently are? Okay. Yeah, that, that's that, fine. That'll yep. help me figure out what's... No, yeah. did, Mike, did you print out the current regs? No. Oh, okay, yeah. that was... You can just sorry. List them so A is the subdivision of land. B, changes in use that do not cause any exterior changes in appearance of the building or lot. C, the repair or replacement of architectural features using materials of identical composition, type, and appearance. Do you want, I guess I need to read it for the record, but then you can mm -hmm. also yeah, just copy. Um, Non-substantial alterations as determined in writing by the administrative officer. I can tell you right now I hate that one. Yeah, what, what is yeah. that? that Mm -hmm. It does not, there is no clarification mm -hmm. on what okay. that is. Um, the removal of signs, so long as no evidence of signs installation remains, and interior renovations, but the alteration to doors or windows located on exterior walls is not mm -hmm. an exempt activity, is a clarifier. That's all. So, so windows and doors? Well, uh, yeah, alterations to windows or doors and exterior walls is not exempt. It's a clarification on what interior renovations is. Is it correct that all of those things are included in the proposed exemptions plus others? Um, uh, yes. Sir, can you say that again? I was, just, I was just clarifying that all of the existing exemptions are in these proposed ones plus 
new additional ones. Um, well, except for maybe the uh, non. I, I think what we did. Yeah, except for the non-substantial. Right. You know, we dealt with that whole issue with the administrative by approval being options. Specific, yeah. Okay. And by being okay. really specific in what the exemptions cover. Great. So, yes, that, so I was going to try to get to the administrative approval part so we can skip to there. Um, so there's, there's a, just, just to catch everyone up, there's a section here, a subsection that uh, states that certain state exempt buildings are still going to be subject to this like that's the intent uh, that was the bottom of page three yeah and, that's and then just as a clarifier yeah, for the public that yeah. that's a lot broader than just oh, oh you mean statutorily exempt buildings? yes okay this is state under state law yeah yeah that's what, yeah so the limitations was there that's I mean yeah. it's it doesn't seem to be a like a widely applicable thing well, um, it, is, it could be actually pretty applicable but at least it's specifically stated in, in the regs now, whereas before it was it was actually regulated, but it was not specific. So there's room to debate. Yeah. Well, there the pro there have been zoning administrators who don't pay attention to that, um, and or, or who pay over attention to it and just don't put those buildings through design review at all, even though technically they're supposed to go through design review because there might be aspects of the project that come up that can be regulated by zoning. Hmm. It's not supposed to be a blanket exemption. That's why we right. put this in here so that, That's great. you know, future zoning, we can have consistency. Uh, and then the next section on top of page four is about the application process, which we've gone through most of uh, in Meredith's intro, except this also has the administrative review process step, right? Do you want to go through that? Um, yeah, I mean, this has part of it, the, the section... H right. on page five has more of that. And I figure um, we can just do, well, okay, you want to wait? We can wait till we get to H. Sure. Um, so in that case, there's submittal requirements, which are all the things you're supposed to submit with the application, which I don't think we need to necessarily go into, except for my first question about this has to do with the additional materials. And so in the case of windows, replacement windows, these are asking for a lot of additional information. Mm hmm And... Uh, be interested to know what's going on there um so there are some members of the historic preservation commission who really feel like if you're going to replace historic windows um there should be a higher sort of burden of proof that you need to replace them it, it's puts me in kind of a weird position since I also staff the design review committee. I don't see that being something that the design review committee feels a need for. You know, they have certain types of windows that they like to see used because they know they're really energy efficient, they know they work well, they know they look like the older wooden windows, but they just perform a lot better and are easier to use. Um, but Historic Preservation Commission members, at least some, enough of them to keep this in here, mm -hmm. um, really felt like there's a level of value to retaining those old wood windows. And that you shouldn't just replace them if um, there's... You know, you look at the re people talk about the that they're replacing them because of efficiency issues, but then some members have looked at it and gone, okay, great, but you still have your you know your manufacturing issues. The the ultimate carbon cost difference isn't necessarily any any better. Um, I uh, I don't mm -hmm. know. I don't know where that argument all lays out <laughs> at this point. So what do, what do you guys think? What They're just think? asking for a written um, description of why the existing has to be replaced. Right, and it's that's... Not, no specialist who has to be consulted. Or yep, no, like no specialist has to be consulted. They just want photographs of exist condition, you know, existing conditions. They're not... For the additional materials, they are asking for additional materials from the applicant. Um... I'm not sure that 
what they've written in here has enough musts to have that change what the decisions at the design review committee level are going to be. And I think part of the reason that they want this additional level for replacement windows is um, especially in relation to you know truly historic buildings, buildings that are on the National Register. Um, I, I think that's one reason that's in there. I mean, un unfortunately, it is something that is in relation to replacing windows on anything, not just historic buildings. It seems like this is like probably the biggest issue in here. Dealing, if we can figure out windows, we've like, we're like 80% of the way there. Siding is the other one. Yeah, siding and windows are, are the big ones where, you know, people are going to get worked up about. And, and I don't know, I don't know why I have an answer or anything, but uh, being like, thoughtful or maybe even laying out options of what's what's possible um, well and maybe it's a just while we're on the topic jumping to the design review standards for windows might be one of the things since we're on this topic mm -hmm. anyway sure. um so that is let's see we've got the specific design standards for alterations and additions to building um, so this is section 2201K1, we're on page 8, seven. very at the bottom, uh, yeah, yeah, it's 7, and then, but it's on page 8, way at the bottom, on sub Roman numeral 8, windows and doors, yeah, where it says, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep, um, window mm. pattern sizes, <laughs> proportions, and original features such as trim, sash, and moldings shall be preserved to the extent possible. <laughs> it's, well, but the thing is, to, there's not, that's pretty, there's a lot of wiggle room in there. Um, you could give it a little more wiggle room and really, you know, the pattern, sizes, proportions, of original features a lot of times maybe not the sash but they keep that trim and the moldings they pop those out they take the interior window out and put a new window in and put the the old not sash but molding back on on then a lot of times they replace those from the inside we had a discussion about that on the the historic building where they replaced 29 windows um recently um so they're not they're not saying you have to keep the windows wood here necessarily. They're not saying the material has to stay the same. Um, I think we're a little bit where the inconsistency that I found came in was the so what appeared on page five for the additional materials application requirement, that's an application requirement. That's not a standard. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna ask you to provide information that we're not going to use because we have no regulations later on that will actually use any of that information that you just provided. We couldn't approve or deny it because there's nothing in here that goes and mm -hmm. says windows, you know, and you should not insert. This is just a good rule. You should never insert rules into your process questions. Hmm. You all your yeah. because we're going to be reviewing this under the review. You don't want to go and say, well, in the application requirement, it says that you need to maintain the windows. That if if we keep that, that needs to be inserted into eight on page eight. That's what I was thinking when I brought it's, it up before, and it, it already says in that sub two on page five, DRC may require additional information. Like that's what that section's about. Yeah. So, give them that, and if they want the extra on Windows, they can use it. Yeah. Yeah, and that or, is a, and it may also be this is a may, so it would be one of those. It goes to the DRC. The DRC is saying. Hey, this is a historic building. We need more information. Come back next time. You know, it's not. It's not mm -hmm. saying because this is just saying the DRC may require it. I'm not going to require that at the beginning. That's for the DRC to decide if they need it. But it's also a heads up for the applicant if they don't want to come back. Then maybe they'll provide the additional yeah. information. Yeah. So then, yeah, I guess it becomes is that does that does that actually match up with anything? 
And Mike has a point that it really doesn't. Yeah, I, yeah, I think where that first sentence ends, understanding of a proposal period, I think that's fine. I mm -hmm. think it's everything, if replacement of windows is being proposed, I think that needs to, if, if that stays there, I would make that a subset and it says regarding windows, it's this, but then whatever application requirements you're asking for need to then line up very directly with a requirement later on that says we should review the information that was submitted in number two to make this decision as to whether or not the window can or can't be replaced. Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, we have had instances where people say, we're replacing these windows because they're damaged, not because we want, they want a better window. They're just saying these are damaged and we cannot repair them, we need to replace them. I think that's where this is coming from. So then but then the question the is... The can just ask for whatever more information they deem appropriate to determine whether or not... Yeah, because you have that first sentence. But, but under 8, the requirement yeah. is, is not that the materials, it is only that the patterns, yep. sizes, proportions, and features shall be preserved to the extent possible. Yep. I mean, it's not even saying that the window itself needs to be preserved. It's the pattern, the look, mm -hmm. that's what has to be preserved. And therefore, all this application requirement up front is... Yeah, yeah they say, do say that door materials... Door materials... Need to, need to be preserved on primary facades, but it doesn't say anything about windows, whereas this additional materials extra is all about windows. Could, I mean, there's, there are a lot of different parts here and when you just look at um, seven where that's talking about architectural features not limited mm -hmm. to windows mm -hmm. um, if they're distinctive you know shall be preserved yeah, the distinctive materials features and construction techniques yeah. that characterize or characterize a property shall be preserved yeah. So that seems like that's probably an instance maybe where you've got a building with a certain type of window that the DRC may want more detail. I don't know. Yeah. And they, yeah, right, and they can ask for it. Yeah, well, and that's without having to put all of this information yeah. in there. Yeah, five talks a little bit about materials, historic building materials. Well, I just, I think, like, you bring up a good point, which is sub-tool on page five, the additional materials piece. It's a question really, I mean, I think as I'm reading it more and more, the subsection does a number of different things. It it doesn't do one specific thing; it does a couple. Of and so, if you want to, and I agree with you that the if replacement of windows is being proposed, the applicant must provide. I think that that is just you're begging for trouble, especially if you don't line it up with the requirements later on in sub K. Um, if so, I would suggest cutting it out altogether because I think the first sentence grants the committee sufficient discretion to ask for whatever it wants to for whatever reason it wants to, which I think is appropriate. Uh, my only suggestion is, is if, we, if you do want to keep that second kind of clause, I guess I'll call it, is it should be separated out and made a, a separate subsection just to make it clear that it's kind of a separate piece from the broader discretionary grant. So, uh, additional materials, the if replacement of windows is being proposed. So, so, do you have a motion? Um, so, the thought here is that we would just ask a commission, send our suggestions as a group back? I don't think we need, like, motions or... Um, you don't think so? Well... Maybe not on I mean, each individual uh, item. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean... All right, fair enough. I, I think... If there were to be a motion at this point, it would be, you know, I would yeah. guess the commission would move to provide yeah. <laughs> a, nope. a report of some kind of <laughs> proposed changes or something like that. But I, I guess that, that's actually a good, really good question. I missed the last meeting. I'm a little unclear about where we 
So, yeah, well, last meeting we didn't have a forum, so we just did a working group where we just, uh, Stephanie and, and Ariana and I just discussed some, and Mike discussed just some, some various things and but just I'm, kind of planning. I'm just trying to pay attention to the meeting before yeah. that. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, for tonight, uh, the idea is to get through these and have all of our suggestions that we send back to historic preservation. Okay. And, and then for process purposes, historic preservation would then basically say, yes, we agree with this, no, we don't agree with this, right. give yeah. it back to you, and then it's your job to get the mm -hmm. next tier draft, whether you make final tweaks or not, to move up to City Council. As you say, this is ours to move up to City Council. Yeah, it's not Historic Preservation Commission's. Yeah. But I'm a little bit confused about the, and I'm sorry if this was explained before, but the Historic Preservation Commission they're in gives input, but they don't actually make the design review decisions. Correct. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, but there is, right now, the chair of the Historic Preservation Commission is also the vice chair of the Design Review Committee. And there's other, there's at least one other Historic Preservation okay. person on Design Review Committee. So there's, there has been, over the last, I don't know how many years, Eric has been on both, um, some overlap. Um, but Historic Preservation Commission was also fairly defunct for a number of years. Um, and then the whole rule rewrite, regulations rewrite process sort of woke it all up and got new membership. And another, look, while we're talking about that, Aaron, another thing that's coming up is um, probably next week we'll be talking about the overlay district and its boundaries, which is going to be something that's entirely on us for now before we make our suggestion to the City Council. And that's going to be something that we'll probably also need to get, or we will definitely be getting public input on after we've decided what we think would be a good place to start. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that those boundaries are, yeah, again, where this, what this is going to apply to. Yeah, I remember that discussion. Yeah. Um, so, so our first suggestion is to delete everything after the word proposal yep. in sub uh, two on page five. Got it. Under additional is there, materials. Is there anywhere else where they are asking to provide under submittals asking to provide photographs? If not necessarily of the existing conditions. Um yeah, current color photographs showing the site and affected structures, all sides, neighboring structures, and relevant details. So that's okay. um, G right. sub one sub D. Right. Um, and then Yeah, so that if if they're looking to yeah. say yes, these match what's there they need to at least see what's there yeah and you also have an f annotated photographs of the existing structure including architectural details such as trim and molding there's there's multiple places okay. where they All spell right. out we yeah, really good. we need details right. um so then did you want to move on to the administrative review section yeah okay um so this is really broken down into two different parts times when the administrative, the, the zoning administrator or administrative officer takes care of the primary approval. Um, and there's just a specific list of items, um, including, you know, individual accessory structures. Um, that's like right now, if somebody wants to put a shed on a parcel, that that's in the design review overlay district, that has to go to design review committee. At this point, HVC suggests, as long as it's just your f first accessory structure, just exempt it if it's in the side or rear yard. There's just no, it, it's silly to, to have that go through design review committee. Um, additional things like awnings. Um, and this is one place where there's kind of an interesting, so in the exemption list that we looked at, you had the whole discussion about exterior placements of meters, vents, et cetera, and fuel, fuel pro, propane tanks, right, that were in the rear yard. Those are completely exempt. If they're on the side elevation of the building or in the side yard, depending on which item you're talking about, those could now be approved administratively. So they don't need to go to the design review committee, but they still need some level of approval. Um, and part of that is so that there can be confirmation that there's some screening involved or you know you're not putting a neon green vent on the side of your building that faces your neighbor um, so the administrative officer would be able to say hey you need to make it the same color as the side of your siding 
Um, so there's a whole long list of items, including um, ADA features. Um, gutters, right now, the addition of gutters is supposed to go through design review. Um, and removal of signs, those things are all specifically exempt. Uh, you know, just administrative approval required. No DRC meeting. And then the other category of items is if there is a minor change to a previously approved project. So, you know, I had to make my own discretionary call on um, a design review permit recently that was they've gotten approval for a sign. They came back and said, oh, the material isn't going to be metal, it's going to be vinyl. It's not going to change the appearance, it's not going to change the color, it's not going to change, you know, the level of reflective surface. None of these things are changing. It's just the underlying material. Luckily, there's another provision in the regulations, zoning regulations, that gives the zoning administrator the opportunity to amend previously issued permits, but having this um, further clause that matches back to that to say yes, even design review approvals can get amended, I think is helpful. Um, and it, it echoes the language using the material change, um, but then throws in this other clarifier that the amendment does not affect any character defining features on the parcel and character defining features is something that's specifically defined in this section proposed section of the regulations are um, signs um is there enough clarity where you would feel comfortable that signs altogether could be administratively approved i'm trying to think if that's like half the applications uh, be saving everyone a lot of time right? i don't think that would be a great idea Right. They have so much knowledge um, and guidance to give on signs, including... They see a lot of them. Well, and, and a lot of... Well, but it's also a lot of these people are landlords or developers or contractors. So they can look at a sign and be like, mm, you don't want that color combination. There's not enough difference between the two colors you have here to make the sign pop in low light or wait where are your lights placed are you using a glossy paint on your sign or are you using a matte paint if you use a glossy paint and these lights your glare at nighttime means nobody's going to be able to read your sign i mean those those are things that especially a brain somebody brand new who doesn't have that background as a zoning administrator they're going to have no idea how to give that guidance design review committee since I've been here is very much in my mind a resource base and not just a yes or no base um, and like when we've had some nonprofit groups come in to get things approved because of the level of resources and contacts that the committee has there have been instances where they have been able to point a nonprofit towards a resource to be able to cut their costs on their project so that then they can do their entire project in the next three years and not just do half their project. And then they go, okay, let's just give you approval for the whole thing. Even though you're coming to us for part of it and trying to do it in phases, we can get you, we can point you to where to go so that you can get your whole project done. That kind of, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want signs as a whole to just go to the zoning administrator. Um, I think that means that people are going to miss out on feedback that would really help them. It's not all the time, but it happens enough that I think it's worth it. Is there... I mean, I hear what you're saying, but I also kind of hear what John say, which is mm -hmm. you can you achieve some administrative efficiencies here. Um, I'm wondering if there's just like an ability for opt into, you know, just like an administrative review. If it's like a... By, and bypassing, you know, committing review, because it might just be like, hey, look, I just want to put a barber pole or whatever. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to do anything. 
Well, don't go to the barber pole example because oh. that has specific licensing. <laughs> don't go there. Yeah. Um, or like a required consultation with but them. But it's not. It's, um, um, but that's already what it is, really. The, the timing of the permits, I mean, I think we've gotten the average design review application was issued in eight days. From time of application. Time of application to approval was averaged. Yeah. I mean, it, it can be as long as 15 days if you oh, no, uh, missed the deadline, but it's really, yeah, it's, it's pretty that's, that's pretty efficient. If, if, <laughs> if, if, if all you need is design review approval, you can submit your application on a Friday, sometimes depending on how heavy the load is, maybe a Monday, mm -hmm. and you're in a hearing the next Monday, and then your application uh, is I, issued okay. the next Tuesday or Wednesday. No, no, and they they meet twi twice a month. Um, yeah, our our so goals for and this was with city council our goals for administrative permits are to issue within our goal is within 24 hours so if we've got a permit that doesn't need any other reviews that we could issue them you know within 24 hours it doesn't always work out because we've had a much heavier workload lately but drc the goal is to issue the permit within 15 days and a drb hearing is uh, should be issued within 45 days and that's from the time you submit an application. Usually it will take longer. We've actually averaged 30 days for DRB, but it usually when it takes longer, it's not because of anything the administrative staff did. It's because the applicant isn't giving the information that the DRB needs and the DRB is tabling their hearing because the application isn't, applicant isn't getting all the information. But so those are the targets we shoot for is to, is to not have the exceptions are what everybody hears about. The you know this has been five months of permitting, but right. those are the those are the right. exceptions. Right. Okay. Most of our average permits, and we we submit. I I have to submit annual reports to city council on um, the amount of time it takes us to issue permits, and, and a lot of the zoning changes we made before were to help to adjust some of those times, like short circuiting usually it used to be all drc applications had to go to the drb which added another two weeks and then drb hearings have a 30-day appeal period so it was adding six more weeks mm -hmm. to a permit compared to having it be an administrative permit which would come back to us be issued the next day with a 15-day appeal period so it was yeah. really um, it made a big difference in the timing on that one so we do try to keep the, the amount of time down the issue is usually getting the information from people. That's usually what takes the longest is we can approve this really quick if you get us the information. Yeah, I mean, statutorily, there is there is an option if you really wanted to, to say that as long as the, you know, the lighting, the shape of a sign, um, the size of a sign isn't changing, that it doesn't go to DRC because technically we're not allowed to review content. Um, but I, I think that I think that there is a value in having that feedback. No, that's, you know, that's, makes yeah. sense. that's just yeah, that's efficiently. Good. And yeah. signs, oh. so I'm not, signs make a big difference. Yeah. 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 I mean, signs and what you have for signs in downtown are going to make a big difference. And even if we can't necessarily tell you you have to change your color, um, to have that be an option in you know, and to get them that that feedback mm -hmm. is is helpful. So for the sake of trying to get this done by seven thirty, <laughs> and move us along. Sorry. Okay? Um, so, so the next big section, 22.1.I, is about the design review standards. And my understanding here is this is not just historic preservation, but this is the, your general design review standards. Uh, and I actually do have something of my own on this one. This came up during the presentation from the uh, committees. Uh, the second paragraph under design review standards has some outside materials that can be uh, conferred by the uh, city, the various uh, groups looking at this, except it could be read in a limiting way. I think that's, that's what we talked about when it came up. So I would just suggest that before the first colon that it says, uh, you know, it's the second paragraph down under 2201.I. Uh, I'm 
Page six. Yeah. To, to facilitate review of the applications, the administrative officer, development review board, and design review committee may review, and I would suggest adding any outside materials, comma, including the following colon. Uh, including but not limited to? Uh, in, in my in my um, experience in interpreting interpreting Vermont law, including always means always including means. but yes. not. Yes. Uh, yep. Nope. That it's just I, I agree with you. Yeah. Just sometimes people, right. some people, people yep. lay people sometimes read that and believe that it means just those things. Right. Um, so um, you got that. Yep. Okay. So if everybody's so that sounds fine with yep. everyone. Yep. Um, and so then we then we can go on into the standards themselves. Um, and if it helps move things along, I would ask Meredith, what's changed here from what's current <laughs> That's, regulations? Uh, I, everything. I, everything. Okay. Everything. Okay. So even, even when it comes to these general standards. So uh, the I can't I can't point out to you which specific things are the same. Okay. Um, because the the current the current regulations have eight criteria that's it it's a list of eight criteria unless you are talking specifically about western gateway district riverfront district or um signs so we've taken those you know the, the hpc has taken those eight criteria and basically said okay great these are all reflected in part or in some way in the um you know, Secretary of Interior's standards for rehabilitation. Instead, let's go back to the source, which is one of the things we're supposed to use as a CLG community, and then take those and elaborate on them or add to them as we think is required to be able to use them for Montpelier and use them for both, um, you know, changes to a current building and apply them to new, brand new development. Um, and so that's how they've broken this all up so that you have your section J, which is your general design standards that apply to everything. Yeah. Then you have your specific design standards that apply to specific categories of design so that, you know, you've got you in here, you have your old categories like signage, which we had before. It's just been adapted a little bit. But then you also have specific standards for alterations and additions to buildings, things that apply specifically to just new buildings or new additions. I realize I misstated something. These general design standards are historic specific, actually. Um, I, I thought that they were broken off, but apparently uh, these are. My, no, my recommendation no. was to break them into, because one through five are referring to historic six, Seven and eight, I think yeah. we're looking at. Yeah, J is supposed to sort of apply generally, but it is written so that you have some historic, some new. It, it's a little messy. They were really trying to have these these general design standards are your overarching, sort of your overarching, not not goals sort sort of your aspirations if you're talking master plan whereas all of your specific design standards are specifics of how you can achieve these general design standards you just have to match them up depending on whether you're not you're not you're talking about a historic building or a current building or a new building but it is a little messy. I think part of it was trying to figure out the flow for them and also trying to figure out how you would do a worksheet. Um, you know, because you might have, you know, number six, new additions, exterior alterations, or new construction um, shall not distort historic materials, and the new work shall be differentiated from the old this is going to apply both to potentially your alterations and additions well i guess it's no i guess that one only applies to alterations and additions to buildings i'm trying to see here yeah seven applies to both mm -hmm. um
eight kind of applies to both. Hmm. You know, if you're talking about you're putting a new building on a parcel that also has a historic structure, I mean, there there might be ways to reorganize it. I think I might I might yeah. suggest a my, yeah, my something. My question I put Mike when I did K was, do we need to have general and specific, specific? Could we just tie these two together? Because it seemed like a number of the ones that were in the general could easily just be. You know, like I said, one through five are specifically talking about historic, so why not just in, remove those from the general and insert them into K one A? Yeah, except uh, if they're not applying in multiple instances. So would it be instead having basically alterations and additions to buildings, and then you have under a, you, you have additions and exterior alterations to historic buildings, and then sub Roman numeral one is instead of height, general requirements, and then you list the things here because these aren't, don't necessarily talk about height or proportion or rhythm specifically. I think some of these things about the specific were supposed to help give you just more detail in, in some places, examples as best they could without doing the full illustrated guideline, giving enough detail to actually be able to implement it in a consistent way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we could work on if, if that was a, a, a desire to see if we that just gets pulled forward and put in as so it might be Mike, you and you and I working on it to try yeah, to find the, a way to make that work if the planning if that's what the planning commission wants to do to do away with this section and integrate it with the others there may be some that are general design he's just saying but taking some of jay and putting it in case basically what he's saying um like number nine i can't see why number nine on the top of page seven couldn't be moved to point k number six which talks about um which is back on uh, well, landscaping screen and site landscaping furnishings. and screening on page twelve. There's a whole section on landscaping screening and site furnishings, which apply to all districts in all settings. And here we've got a general one up here mm -hmm. that maybe that just can get moved there and save us a spot. It does feel like, from the you know, general public or the from who we've heard from around design review. Um, during the zoning changes that I suspect some of the criticisms of this might be its length and redundancy and, and um, just that it's not um, it's not necessarily written to be very like user friendly mm -hmm. and anything that we can do to help address that would probably be help its likelihood of successful adoption um, but I think maybe you as someone who's going to be administering this probably be in, in a good position maybe to identify the uh, where a lot of those things mm -hmm. are and where some things are just there and are going to be very useful so no, I, I think I think this makes sense. I I think this makes sense because I mean when I was thinking about it just administratively, initially I was thinking almost having your recommendation form be mostly J with some subsets so you know which ones you're pulling for when you're talking about specifically say you know windows and doors or something like that. But you may not need those general design standards. You might be right. It might be that there's some generally applicable things that fall under I think new buildings or, or yeah repetition. and even if there's some a little bit of repetition when you're talking about when you apply some of these to put some of them in I think for the I'm sake of time I would be comfortable with us relying on Meredith and Mike working together yeah. to uh, identify a uh, more user-friendly way to uh, present the standards in J and K. Yeah. Um, 
and passing those along to historic preservation for their look before it comes back to us. Ferris, I just was wondering if there's a clarification on um, uh, J11. It talks about integrate universal design principles, but it's not a defined term. Yeah. And it's not, it's not capitalized either, so <laughs> we don't know that it's referring to it. Yep, so that's, the, a, that's a super good question. I'm like, what are universal human designs? I mean, I have no uh, idea. That was, part of it, I think, is that it's a term of art. I'm honestly going to let you know that because I don't have a design background, that particular one kind of went over my head in the discussion. Um, and there was debate internally in the HBC on whether or not that made sense. Yeah. So I think if, you know, if, it, I think that's something that the HBC is not necessarily <coughs> going to, you know, throw up a red flag if you say you either need to clarify this or get rid of it. Yeah. Um, because also the universal, you know, I think trying to implement that is something that would be really difficult. I mean, a lot of the design principles are listed elsewhere in the specific points of proportion, yeah. rhythm, and all of that. So. Well, and I think that's also one reason this was here, is to sort of, because this is supposed to be generally applicable, and then you look down at the specifics to see where it feeds in, but they didn't specify. Um, so yes, I, I I think below yeah. Or something. yeah yeah well except that the, you don't then reference that proportion and rhythm are part of the universal design principles below so I think right. I think and you can probably get rid of it since it's already incorporated in specifics. Okay. Are, are, are there universal design principles? Universal. Yeah. Who interprets them? Yeah, well, you I, mean, I mean, see, I have no idea. There I mean, are you, you, there yeah. are design principles. I don't know that I. Could there say there it. are universal design principles and that that is intended for uh, accessibility. So a ADA accessibility, it's, it is a more inclusive ADA. So the universal... Well, I'm not sure that that's what they were referring to. Universal design principles, when especially in shall be pedestrian oriented, oh, oh, oriented yeah. and integrate universal design principles. Universal design ah, principles means accessibility by anybody. And that's what the universal design principle is. Well, I would guess that there's a definition. Uh, there is, but it's... it's not. Yeah. So maybe maybe it's we make sure that that's a defined term instead. It would have to be a defined, defined term, and it would have to... We'd, we would also have to know to what extent that's going to put in for requirements. Are they the seven principles of universal design developed by architects? It's not the same. Equitable it's use, design. flexibility in use, simple and intuitive use. I think that's... I think that's... that's what they what they were referring to. Yeah. Okay. If it's well, not, then definitely there's definitely Google confusion. Yeah, because I would have assumed universal design, because when we talk about housing, universal design and housing is to be accessible. But in that case, is it is it capitalized? Because it's very I specific. I thought it was. So yeah. if it was capitalized, yeah. capitalized and, and that's, I'm saying from my discussion, I don't think that they yeah. meant the and ADA kinda, ones. It, yeah, and yeah. There, no, 13 can be another one that can, can have some yeah. vagueness to it can have some vagueness, a lot of vagueness to it. New Lane Development shall incorporate sustainable design and construction materials and material compatibility with historic materials and styles. I think the fact that the word integrate there is, that gives a lot of flexibility. Yeah. It's not a very strict word. Yeah. And well, but then the next sentence on that is where Mike had problems before integrating any energy conservation measures to enhance the sustainability of a historic building, the existing energy efficient characteristics of the building shall be identified and preserved. And that's a shall. It's, that's so confusing. That one's Let's just get rid of that. I don't know. I don't understand what it's well, saying. Well, they're trying to say, because the first sentence is all about new development. Really what they're trying to get at is Because they're talking about sustainability, they're saying Mike thinks that they're really trying to get at you can't just change out your windows. Yeah, there's this undertone <laughs> yeah, of that argument. Yeah, you're going to replace, yeah, replace your windows. Are not the place for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If, you're, if they're already efficient, whatever that means, then well, you have to keep if, them. 
if replacing uh, an old leaky window will save so many BTUs, but replacing that window with a new window, we first have to factor in how much energy it took to pump the oil out of the ground, ship it, to make that vinyl window that's going to go in to replace that window, there's actually more carbon that's being emitted to build that window than it would be to fix the old window. Even though the old window doesn't about work. Embodied energy. Yeah, isn't that the term? <laughs> it is. It, term. It is. It's not listed. Yeah. It's not stated. Here. And and that. But we that as detail of the discussion have to go through and make a decision as to whether or not somebody has provided us the information and whether that information is accurate and whether that's going to be. Yeah. So. Uh, personally, as zoning administrator, I'm fine getting rid of that sentence. I am not sure that this analysis is what all the members of HPC is not the way they pursed yeah. it out to, for it to mean. That wasn't my first reading. My but first reading was reading if, if you already have tight windows or if you already have some insulation, then keep it. So I, I think oh, that or, kind or of or thing. Be careful when you add insulation to a historic building because if, of what you can it, do to damage the building. Yeah. Or if it's naturally insulated already, don't get rid of that. I mean, you have to look at yeah. the like a solid wall. Let's yeah. drop thirteen. <laughs> well, not I don't. don't I wouldn't drop. Adding. I wouldn't drop the yeah. whole thing. If we don't know what it means. So. Um, I don't understand it, and so I don't know what it's adding. If I can, well, it's what. The one thing I say is, if you guys are going to work on integrating the general design standards, anyway, it's good. The one thing, the one comment I would make about the general design standards is that really that's a bit different from the specific stuff is I read this stuff as through the lens of whether or not these this list of issues gives sufficient notice to an applicant of mm -hmm. what's expected of them and specifically some of these general more general ones I think this discussion here illustrates that there that mm -hmm. that guidance is lacking that notice is lacking so it might be just an exercise of just drilling down like what is it that they really want. But what are we really talking about? Just say it. You know, It'd I, be I, nice I, to like I, I get just, an application just, and I'll have to try to just go yeah, through it. I just it. feel like there's like there's definitely yeah. nuts in all of these, but it's sort of cloaked in a lot of language that sort of just gets around. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I think just, a couple just, of these last ones got a little yeah, bit more I, a little bit more into things like even twelve I don't think technically I would support keeping either. Mm -hmm. If you read it literally so if you, you know, alterations to building called for by public safety, accessibility, and fire codes shall be designed to maintain the character of the construction. What we would re we reverse that in our heads to go through and say, if you will not be able to maintain the character of the construction materials and features, then we will deny your application. Mm -hmm. I mean, we yeah. we we turn these as administrators. We have to turn these into the negatives so we can go and say, okay, well. If they can't, okay, you have to take the molding off, you have to take the historic molding off to widen this, to put in, to make it handicapped accessible, because you're going to remove the molding, you're denied. And clearly, we probably yeah. versus versus <laughs> that is shell then. Right, or, or, or not having a qualifier of to the extent reasonable or something like that, or just be like, if it's public sa safety, accessibility, and fire codes, I I'm sorry. How we would you just deny it. you just have to be allowed to do it, and you move that to an exemption. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, I, I mean, right. I mean, that's the thing. Something like that, that not really becomes. A, you're gonna have to comply with fire codes. Try to do it in a way that's helpful to us. But it's you're right. Like. Flipping it, viewing it as a negative, is a, is a much clearer way of really drilling down to what what these general standards are really asking you. All the and that's the thing. I, a lot of this stuff, especially on the back end, I just don't. If I'm an applicant, I don't have a good side. Like, no. You're not proposing to take 12 out, are you? I mean, I think it was just one that I think we. It, I think it needs to be moved somewhere else. Yeah, Mike, or it needs to be. Mike and I need. Mike and I need to. Mike and I need to figure this out, and then be able to go back to HPC yeah. with a suggestion but on how I to rework these. What we need to make sure we get from the from you guys mm -hmm. is the some of the bigger policy where where your thoughts and minds are. So because we haven't jumped into, we've made recommendations to HPC and how we would tweak it. 
but we really haven't jumped too far into the policy stuff because we need you guys to make those policy decisions of, you know, where things go, and then we can come back and massage things to mm -hmm. go through and say, now that we've been thinking about it, we know what you want, and here's a better way of saying it. So, so for these groupings, would it be fair for us to, to say that we'd like you to look at it and to clarify or eliminate where appropriate? So it sounds like we're for it, the general and realign them into the and specifics and realign. if possible. You're going to fit those into the, the subsections. Where I think where it makes sense, um, and I think one of the other, you know, I mean, there's, there's, their big, big, big picture. Are you, are you good with the decision to have design review review both historic as well as new development? I mean, that's a huge part of this. Is everybody on board with that? Because if you're not, then it's a reverting it back to HPC for a pretty big rewrite. So does, I, no. I would say so far it seems like we're under that assumption, okay. but we haven't really fully had the discussion. Is that something the design review doesn't do now? They don't do new development? They do, oh, but okay. the problem is that, I mean, there, there is a choice to do one or the other. Design review does do both right now and covers, it's the whole, it's design review. It's not just historic review. Yeah. Um, and Historic Preservation Commission made the decision to keep that, but providing way more detail and specific subsets as to what applies to which kind of development when it comes to the regulations. Because right now, you just have your one list of criteria, and the DRC has to say, uh, this, is, this is, you know, clearly, preservation or reconstruction of appropriate historic style does not apply to new development. You know, harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district, it applies to both kinds of development. Um, and it's just a making sure that planning commission is on board with that decision to stick with covering both, the, you know, design, having it be design review and not just historic review. So I just wanted to make sure that you were on board with that. May I make a broad policy recommendation when you're taking a look at this document? I think the more that I'm looking at this and the more we're talking about it is, and take this with a big grain of salt because I'm sort of fleshing this out of my mind right now, is I think what may be helpful is, is this, this document as I read it seems to be drafted in a way, there's a lot of competing considerations, a lot of overlays with trying to be achieved here. EPA requirements, fire safety, like all these sort of broader issues that are always sort of present here. The document kind of is drafted in a way where all those other sort of competing considerations are, it's drafted in a way where those are sort of subservient to this historic preservation goal. Does that make sense? And it might be helpful when you take a look at how to integrate this stuff is sort of prioritize what are drop dead things that are non-negotiable, <laughs> ADA requirements, fire code requirements. Mm -hmm. And I think that might be helpful if you go back and sort of tweak some of this language, is try to figure out, like, set aside things that you just have to acknowledge, and those you have, and you have to work around those things, as opposed to trying to work those things into this goal. Mm -hmm. This historic preservation. Does that make sense? I don't know. Yeah, we've got some oh, things that we does. must yeah. allow. We have some things right. that yeah. applicants must meet. Right. And then I think we've got some some that are somewhere in the middle. I yeah, think. and I think if you prioritize those competing interests, it would help to sort of help integrate mm -hmm. those. Oh, yeah, no, no, this is. I don't mean to tell that. No, 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 no. It's, it's also. Having this feedback from the planning commission versus just staff who's supposed to be there to, right. to some degree, guide, but also to draft things the way the HBC is asking them to be presented as this is their wish. Mm -hmm. um, having that feedback to go back. Yeah, and that's is and that's exactly how I I think that document has that tone right now, which is mm -hmm. this is how we'd like things to be, and that's perfectly laudable, um, but it it's sort of bury some of the issues that I think applicants need to be mm -hmm. aware of 
and just need to be recognized when they're applying to the project. And I'm sorry, I can't be more specific. No, no, you don't have to be. You don't have to be. That makes sense. Um, so do you feel like you have what our suggestion is for J yep. and N to K there? Yep. Um, okay, so to move along, we've, we're kind of still on K, I guess. Um, um, yeah, K is, K is broken into six different sections if you mm -hmm. follow it yep. all the way down. It's most of the details. So K ones for existing structures, right? Alteration and additions to existing. A, little a being historic, little b being non-historic. I have one small thing I noticed looking through this section, and it's in a few different places. It's, it's where the extent possible is kind of a phrase that's used over and over again. Yep. Um, and, you know, I was more in favor of adding a little more flexibility to some of these things. Um, and so I was thinking for some of these to the greatest extent practicable. For instance, we've already mentioned under Windows. And maybe Windows isn't the best example, but it's, you know, it says the pattern, sizes, proportions, original features such as trim, sash, and molding shall be preserved to the extent possible. Possible is a very strict word. Or it could be interpreted depending mm -hmm. on the, the personalities and how, how the DRC chooses to look at it. Then how do you define practical? Uh, That's you, you don't, but you, there, there, has to be, there has to be some wiggle room. It's more of a standard than an absolute rule. That's the way I'm yeah. seeing it. Is it's, it's more of thinking of like what's uh, common sense or, or reasonable. Yeah, yeah. Whereas possible doesn't really have to take reasonableness into account. If it's possible, oh, it's that's possible. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I'm getting at. Yeah, it's possible. It'll cost nervous. you three quarters of a million dollars, mm -hmm. but it is possible. Yeah. Practicable might be going and saying, well, that, that's, that's not really practical. <laughs> yeah. And another example of it is on the next side under the new structures under sub two. It's a scala massing. Building shall be compatible with surrounding historic structures. Well, this isn't one where it says possible, but I just thought instead of shall be. Yeah, scale and massing, Two. though. Uh, isn't that already in our zoning as well? And, and um, may, that's, maybe. that's part of, that's one of the, if it doesn't go through design review, um, and it's a new building and it's a major site plan, then yes, you're already looking at scale and massing. Yeah. Um, and that's a, I don't think you need the, to the extent practical. Pra or, or, I, I don't. Looking uh, at it again, I think the word compatible has enough squishiness built into it yeah. that's already there. So yeah, kind I mean, of. Compatibility and design. Uh, there's there's so much, uh, so many options there. Mm -hmm. um, compatible was actually defined though. I was glad to see that. It is, yeah, so um, and it's defined, defined in a way that I think gives a lot of. I mean, unfortunately, mm -hmm. it's also, you know, it's in harmony with. Yeah, but it um, to, And harmony is, I can't remember. Oh, picks they, out the characteristics that they're going to be looking at specifically. Yeah. Compatibility. Sorry. At one point, they actually did go so far as to try and come up with a de definition of in harmony. Oh, no. No. <laughs> and then it went off the rails, so we just got rid of that yeah. definition. <laughs> I, could, I forgot that we got rid of that. Um, I uh, no, I think that makes sense to switch out a lot of the possibles to practicable. Um, I think that's something we can definitely, you know, go back to the HPC. And the other thing to remember is, just because the HPC doesn't agree with the changes you are suggesting, doesn't mean you can't make those changes. The the um, only thing I'll point out with the greatest extent possible or practicable is that it becomes extremely difficult to deny an application. Mm -hmm. Because basically, you have to meet this rule, but if you can't meet this rule, then we're going to let you have your project anyways doing X. I mean, so. we, we really can't go through and say, we, you know, you, you have to do this or, or you're denied. Mm -hmm. It, it kind of takes that off the table when you've got to the greatest extent possible. Yeah, that's just what I was just going to suggest is you may want to go through, and if you're going to make those changes, just figure out where you want to stay firm yeah. and requirements and where you want to give that level room because in, in, in my experience in, in other contexts whenever you say something like practicable 
Yep, comes back and says, no, can't do it. Yep. So there's no, you have no, you well, have no recourse. Really, yeah. There's been no basis to do it. And I think, bankrupt me. I can't do it. Okay, and I think that things like um, on page nine, the roof drainage systems and signage where you have when possible and to the greatest extent possible, I would leave those when you're yeah. talking about, you yeah. know, roof drainage systems shall not hide or obscure architectural mm -hmm. character defining features and shall run adjacent to building corners when possible. I'm not going to change that one. Mm -hmm. Same with the one about signage and, you know, evidence of the signs installation must be removed when the sign has been removed to the greatest extent possible. Mm -hmm. You know, if you literally can't repaint the building to adjust for the fa fading, then so be it. But I think in those instances, you need that greatest extent possible to have it as you know, as firm as you can get it for those items. But when it comes to something like matching the window patterning, you shouldn't say, you know, to the greatest extent possible. Right. You know, if it's a four over four, you got to replace it with a four right. over four. There's exactly. No to the greatest extent which I, practical. which I think, which it's, I think is what they have yeah. in here is it needs to match. Um, and then and there's if you some can, places. Then we don't give. Then you're denied. Right. And, and some of these, that's, like that's fine. Yeah. And I don't think I would adjust these either to practicable. For X and, I mean, would you say, you know, you've got to leave some wiggle room, but I wouldn't put practicable. Yeah, on I, roof know, I was just pointing out when that yeah. when that does come up, be careful to read it, knowing that yep. it's it's limiting you as the as the reviewer as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's building in the flexibility, but we lose we lose our ability to say no. So yeah. I'm just curious. I mean, well. Yeah. Well, which I, but I think that's okay because we don't we don't yeah. want to tell somebody you can't remove a sign when we have other regulations that say when you have to, you have to remove your sign once you've left the building. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, so, Jason and Barb. Yeah, new building standards two J. Did that did that really get changed? What do you mean? Did it get changed? Uh, from, we talked about it with the committee, but new construction shall incorporate historic architectural elements that reinforce or add to the character. Um, you can't incorporate, new construction incorporating historic architectural elements is in contradiction to 22 um, J8. J it's a little bit throughout this, this awkward dance of like, if you're building something now, make sure it's representative of now, but make sure it matches all the material and the patterns details. and well, all yeah, the details of the historic buildings. Right, yeah. but this is, True. this is also the compatib, this also goes to the compatibility, I think, but, and saying that when you put in a brand new building, try to, try to make it compatible by doing this. This is one of those things that reflects one of your general standards. So your general, where was the general standard? I think, um, I think the extent, yeah, the, the, the sense is like even when we were building the parking garage, there was a discussion of using the, the, the caps for the parking garage and some of the interior work would be granite or would be materials that look like granite. So that way it reflects the, the other, other buildings. granite buildings that are next door, but it's, it's a new building. It's just rather than having no connection to the rest of the neighborhood, it had these granite. Right. I get and what yeah, they're trying to do. It's just really hard to legislate. Yeah. 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 Oh, <laughs> which is why you... it's historic, then it needs to be historic. Um, and so new construction shall incorporate historic architectural elements. Uh, oh, so yeah, we discussed that. Where we could just, yeah. where we're, we're right. just, so it's, I just wanted to check to make right. sure that. Well, I haven't made any changes because, the, but that was, yeah. I have my notes from our previous Before. discussion, okay. and I'm going to have our notes from this discussion, and then go through and do a bigger rewrite. Just I wasn't, I wasn't going to do drafts in between. Just take the word historic out. Yeah. And I think everybody agreed at that meeting yeah, that I that's what we were going to do. But, but I wasn't sure where uh, it was. Yeah, I, I just, I'm sorry, Barbara. I no, basically, now, now was the, to, now was the time for changes. us to incorporate that. <laughs> Pardon me? We, were, we were waiting until now, I think, to incorporate the stuff we discussed that night. So if you have more things from that night, yeah. Yeah, we, that I, was really the primary one. Yeah, that was, I think, the big change. I know when Stephanie was here at the, um, two weeks ago at the meeting, she commented her confusion with L and M later on, which was the specific guidelines for the Western Gateway and Riverfront District, and she didn't understand why they were there. Those were just, uh, 
they were randomly there and we pulled those in because those are in the current regulations pages 12 and 13 and i would think we could probably strike them i think they they kept them only because they're in the existing rules and yeah we we only kept them because they're in the existing rules i don't have the history as to know why mm -hmm. they were put in the existing rules i mean were those added in the 2018 regulations because no, they changed they, they go back okay but you just changed the forward. name as to what yeah it, because before they before mm -hmm. they were the office park and gateway district okay so and because those districts no longer existed we simply changed the name to be the western gateway district and the riverfront district. yeah i mean you have in riverfront you have your new development shall be oriented so that both river and street facades are primary i mean there are specific things in here that are very specific to those districts and maybe it's a going through and seeing which of these things are now duplicative um you know your 20 201 m1 spatial relationships that's all covered now in our basic specifics yeah, I'm, I'm with stephanie i'm in favor of getting rid of both those there's not Com completely no i don't know as i would get rid of it completely there are some things in here that are very specific to look these are gateways these are pla pe places that people see both sides right um riverfront i'm not sure Riverfront too. And even the gateway. Directional like, expression and sense like of the the view shots are covered. In the, the map is how much. Materials on the river side of a structure shall be of equal character and quality as those on the street side. Like that's very very specific I to mean, the riverfront. There's a few these things. Are, these are the existing. So this is all. So this only applies in the riverfront areas that are within the blue. So it really is just this area. So the question is, if you already have to meet all the other design criteria, you now have an additional set of criteria for these guys. So there's actually more regulation in riverfront than there is in State Street. Yeah. But in some cases, you're seeing both sides of those buildings riverfront where you don't see both sides of state street buildings and without it and well you could on taylor street i mean we're building a couple buildings right now on taylor street that are visible from memorial drive well maybe it's maybe it's go through to have some of these things apply not right. necessarily to the riverfront district but well buildings with river frontage yes versus riverfront district uh, but i don't know if that how that really if that's something that people want to do i mean i think it's aren't views of the of the state house and things like that already covered elsewhere in here yeah so that that is but that's different from this riverfront number two that's a funky one but, but the con aren't those concepts don't they sort of can they be incorporated into the stuff we've already well that's what well, i'm wondering if some of these things can clunky to add it to um to the existing versus just have versus a just couple i mean rooftop definitely some, a concern because you see can, it from above. Can all that stuff be dealt with with scale, massing, orientation, mm. pad, all that mm. other stuff? I, mean, I feel like there's, a, there's enough tools at uh, the design review boards to, in their toolbox to be able to take all that stuff into consideration. What? So what's the resistance to having some specific design guidelines for those two districts? B because they're 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 just they're just grandfathered at the at the moment. They're not really tailored to what we're currently doing. So it's well, so there's not like a, I mean some of these are some of these are duplicative and more general, such as the, you know, provide visual protection for gateways to city and view corridors that's duplicative of just a general yeah. standard in here but then if, it, it may be just a reanalysis i think they didn't want to rework something that had been been very clearly specifically adopted um without confirmation that that was an area open to being reworked could we, could we ask them to take a look at those two sections to, to yeah. find if there's anything that should be incorporated specifically and incorporated elsewhere yep I mean, that's the, you know, right now, 
in Western Gateway, this all utilities shall be placed underground. The only time right now that the DRB deals with that um, about placing utilities underground, I think, is a subdivision. That's the only time that that comes up. Whereas right now in Western Gateway, they're really, for a while now, I guess they've been really trying to push to make sure if you're doing new development, you have that underground. I guess that makes sense. So, yeah, it may be a reevaluation to see which of these need to be kept. Well, I think that actually, talking about those sections, brings us through. We kind of skipped over demolition and signage, and if anyone had anything to say about those. I was just going to ask, is the demo section um, hold on. Let me just make my notes. Um, so that's backwards. So the demolition section. I'm just double checking to make sure that the old one didn't have anything in it. Yeah, the demolition section having that specifically laid out um, is new. Um, and it's a little, I'm going to be honest, it's a little messy. Um, I'm just trying to remember. Hold on one second. Um, I think in 3004, there's some demolition requirements for all structures, but the demolition of national, of historic ones are only. Yeah, I'm just looking, except that the, the current, the DRC, the current zoning regulations say that no structure um, may be erected, reconstructed, substantially altered, restored, removed, or demolished without review of the design plans by the DRC. Mm -hmm. um, so right now, demolition within the overlay district does go to the DRC or is supposed to. Um, and I'm just trying to see what in here is... Yeah, this is this is not new. I think it's just a restatement. I'm double checking the applicability stamp clause here to see if we even need that. Um, applicability. And I don't think we do. I I honestly I think it's duplicative. Given the reference to land development. And the applicability standard and land development includes demolition. So 2201E applicability says land development within the design review overlay district shall only be approved after review by the DRC. Um, and hold on. Demolition requires the DRC and the DRB. DRB. Right. Um, yeah, that's just, I, I think what this was is just to, I think this was sort of a reiteration, just to make it really, really clear for users, but I don't know if it's, Unfortunately, it, this it's is, not this necessary. This is the section that's supposed to be talking about standards, and there are no standards that right. were given. So it doesn't so really make sense should, to have it here. Yeah, this, if you're going to have requirements that you're going to review demolition, we should have standards that say these are the instances where we would approve it, and these are the instances where we wouldn't. Yeah, I think you and I yes, talked about yes. this Good as problems. being a problem. Well, I mean, but I mean, the thing is, they don't... Unless they're just enforcing the rules that are under 3004D. Those are those are the general demolition the standards general. that and, go and say you have to you, you've got two ways of getting approved for demolition. One is the demolition of a historic building, where the resulting redevelopment of the site is going to have a substantial public benefit, and the second one is it's not cost effective to save the structure. Well, and I think that's I think what. That's one reason they had, in a way, these general design standards, which could apply to all of these things, is that your first 
clause here, so in, in addition to your 3004D standards, which are your general demolition standards, which is what this sub 3 incorporates, that you have to review under the provisions of section 3004D, because they didn't want to just rewrite them all. In addition to DRC's review under that, if the general design standards also apply to all of these scenarios specified under the specific design standards, then um, you run into this removal of historic materials or alteration of features and spaces that characterize a property shall be avoided. You start running into some of these general standards that would come into play potentially if we leave it organized the way it is now versus just saying DRC reviews demolition projects just to clarify DRC reviews demolition projects within the overlay district under 3004 D same as the DRB does so you have some options there do we just limit them to the same standards and then they give their guidance to the DRB as to how to apply 3004 D to things I in think the it overlay would be district difficult for somebody to meet the other requirements yeah I think as so well too. as meet the demolition either, either you're going to be allowed to demolish it or you're not going to be allowed to demolish yep. it I apologize I have to run it okay right. yeah, Sorry, we, can guys. Still, we can still we can still vote um, um, so I, th I think what's best there is to leave it to you two to come up with something to, to suggest to historic yeah. preservation is that okay with everyone yeah. And um, so with that, we should try to wrap up real quick and get a vote on our suggestions. Can I ask one, specific, one very quick question? So the definitions um, uh -huh. are, because they're defined terms in here, those defined terms also pertain to the broader zone document? Um, these are not, in other words, these are unique. These are not defined in, in the zoning ordinance. Right, because anything that was defined in the zoning ordinance, we tried to just incorporate those. Right. These, in general, aren't used elsewhere, and this specifically says these defined terms are specific to the provisions of this section. Right. So they exactly. don't apply. They don't No, apply. they don't. The way this is drafted, they don't apply to the rest of the regulations. And yeah. they sh most of them shouldn't be used... If there in is this. one that you want to have used broadly, we would just take it out of this section mm -hmm. and put it into 510. Yeah, if there's something you want yeah, used me, more broadly, then we can do that easily. Let me look at that, but I, because that was not, that's where I wasn't clear, um, because it seems like a number of them could potentially pertain to the larger document. Yeah, they, they, aren't, they aren't intended to like the right now. Okay. The elevation is defined, but it's not defined in zoning? So, Correct. So, yeah, we sh we, we we'll be, have to revisit that, though, because we should vote now, because I know people have to yeah. leave. So, um, do, we, do we have a motion for what we want to pass on? Or I can give a shot at putting it into words. Uh, <laughs> do we have a motion to take the suggestions that we've given to Meredith and Mike tonight to uh, have those incorporated and then pass along to the Historic Preservation Commission Commission for their for their review and possible integration into the proposed regulations. Second. Okay. And uh, who's in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Yeah, and it passes. Were right. That's right. Uh, so we didn't need John's vote. Uh, and then for the agenda to wrap it up, um, we're going to skip the boundary discussion. That's going to be next week. We're just trying to handle all this stuff at once before getting back to the city plan. And uh, it says that we can consider minutes, but um, let's actually just put that off since we ran late tonight, and we'll do that next time. Uh, so with that, uh, motion to adjourn. Non-debatable motion. We adjourn. Thank you.